All right, welcome back everyone. This is part five of our uh, dungeon crawler series. Um, in this episode, we're going to be doing a few things. One of them is going to be adding font, and we're also going to be adding and fixing up the UI a little bit. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to download this font. Um, I'll link it in the description below so um, you guys can uh, put it into your game. So the one I use is Compass Pro, um, compasspro.ttf. And if we go into our game here, I've already put it in. There it is. And what you're going to want to do is I'll delete this for now and do new resource, search for font, dynamic font, and we're going to create it. And I'll just name it Compass Pro. And if I double click it, we'll go into font on the top right here on the side, and we'll just drag in that .ttf file. And now if I go into project settings and I search up GUI, there we go, GUI, sorry. Uh, and go into theme, we'll see custom font. We're going to select that font that we just made, open, and we have to save and restart it. There we go. All right, and now um, what we're going to do is we're going to create a UI. So to do that, what I like to use is the canvas layer. So this essentially allows us to draw anything on top of our layer. I'll capitalize it, so UI, and I'll save it into our main scene. And then I'm just going to drag it into our world. So that way I don't have to go back and do that later. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a panel. You don't have to do this step, but this is the important part, is the progress bar. We're going to use a progress bar for HP. So in our progress bar, what I'm gonna do First is we're going to drag it out a little bit and now you can see the percent but we don't want percent so we're going to actually turn that off for now and then if we go into uh, let me just double check the theme overrides that I used okay so to make it look a bit more like a, a HP bar essentially is we're going to go into styles and we're going to create a new style box empty just to make the middle empty and then we're going to style the outside of it the outside is going to be a style box flat and in this one we're going to recolor it as green i can yeah and you can kind of use whatever color you want but this is the positive hp essentially so this is the hp we have and let's change our value to 50 so we can see what it looks like there we go and that's our hp bar but it doesn't look too good. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to change the radius to 10 on the left and then 10 on the bottom. So that way it's a little curved on the side. And then we have the little panel in the back uh, of the background. We'll kind of, I'm actually going to use the snap grid to fix this a little bit. There we go. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into our panel and I'm actually going to make it slightly less visible, around 120. So it's not 100% visible, but it's still there. All right, next thing we're going to do is add a label. And this will be our HP text. And then we're going to rename this to life bar UI. We're going to create a new script for the life bar UI. And then in our script, it's very simple. We're going to set the max value equals to game dot player max HP. Now, what is this? You may ask. Well, first off, game dot something usually means you're calling a global thing or like a global script essentially. Um, so to do that, we're going to have to create a new folder. I'm going to name it global. I'm going to add a new script. And I'm going to name this game.gd. I'm going to add it. I'm going to go into global thing. And essentially what this is, it's going to hold all the global values that we want to make. Right? So the first one that we're using is this guy, player.maxhp. Or not player dot, but uh, we'll set that to 100. And we'll also make another one that's player. HP. So this is the current HP. So we'll set it to 75 for now, just so we have a difference. 
go into life bar HP. And however, you might see the identifier game isn't declared in our current scope. So what we have to do is go into project settings. We're going to auto load it. So auto load will allow it to be global. So we go into global and open it. And then we add it. This allows us to take anything in this script by calling game, right? You can rename it to game, like capitalized, but I'm going to keep it as capitalized game. And you can name it whatever you want. I just got used to naming it game. But now if we wait a little bit, yeah, there goes the error. And now another thing we're going to do is add a process function, just a normal process function. And we're going to take the dot self value equals to game dot player HP, because we want to constantly be updating what the player's HP is in the value, right? Because if we go here, this is our HP. If we edit it on the top and say 75, it'll go up. And if we say 100, it'll go up. Um, yeah, that's it. So the next thing we're going to do is go back into here. I'm actually going to change the radius to 5 and 5. It seems a bit too rounded. There we go. And then I'll change this to like 2 and 2. All right, and then back in here, what we're going to do is get node dot hp text dot text equals string game dot player hp. Another thing you can do is plus this little thing plus another string game dot layer max HP. So the reason we're doing the string here, this this is converting this thing into a string because this thing is a number, right? We can't print a number as a text. We have to convert it to a string, right? So now if I run the game, it'll have 70 and 100. That looks really ugly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to center it. There we go. And now we have a UI on the top. And it's not completely opaque, so we can kind of see through it. However, you might notice we don't lose HP. So we're going to want to do that. And to do that, we're going to go into our hostile zombie, going to go into the script. And whenever our player gets collided with, right, we're going to I'm going to do this above the Q3, game dot error 8p minus equals 5. And then the we'll keep the Q3 so that our zombie still explodes. So the idea of this is that the, the zombie will hit our player and explode and do minus 5 HP. Um, we also want to give HP to this guy, which we do have. And what else? Does our friendly zombie have HP? No, he does not. He just dies right away. OK. Um, now, if we launch it, yeah, there we go. So it does damage. And it works. Now, one more thing we want to check for is if we go into our player, we want to actually make sure the HP works, right? So uh, the first thing we're going to do, actually, <laughs> is we're going to make a game over scene. So in this scene, we are going to make a 2D scene and rename it to game over. And then I'm going to save it in the main scene. That's OK. I'm going to add a panel. I'm going to Extend it all the way. Doesn't have to be accurate, that's fine. And then we're just going to add a label. And then I'm going to turn on graph snip, or what am I saying? Graph snip. And I'm going to type in game over try again, laser. And then I'm going to center it in both. And then I'm going to add a button in the middle that will say restart. And this will be our restart button. And then if I'm going to add a game over script. And I'm going to connect our restart node to press. I connect it. And whenever I do restart, we're going to do get tree dot um, change scene to world. So we're going to go back to world and it's going to essentially reset the world. Well, it resets every time. So 
Um, now we go back to our world, or no, sorry, we go back to our player. And what happens if we die is, I'm going to have to check that first. If player HP is minus or equal to zero, then we're going to get tree dot change scene. Go to the game over scene. Now, if we launch it, uh, let me just change this to five. So that way I don't have to wait forever. Now, when I die, game over. There we go. And then the restart does not work for some reason. Let me check why. What's going on here? Change scene. Uh, there's one line of code I actually forgot here. Um, I want to reset our player HP. Yeah, I see what was happening. Um, so the reason why the button wasn't working, it was working, but what was happening is we'd go back to the world, but the player HP was still zero, so it would go back to the game over. It was almost instant, so you didn't notice it. So if we try it again, game over. Try again, loser. All right, there we go. Um, one last thing before we end the video is we're going to play with the collision. And to do this, I'm going to go into our hostile zombie and I'm going to select layer two and mask two. So yeah, and then in our player, nope, not our player. We're going to keep our player on one, one. And then in our friendly mob, our zombie here, we're going to go into collision and we're going to select two, two and take off one, one. So what this means is it's going to collide with the hostile zombie, but not the player, because the player is only on layer one and one. But the zombie can the hostile zombie can collide with both of them because it's on two, it's on both, right? So now if I launch it. Oh, ooh, that's interesting. What's going on? Let me try one more time. Let me just double check I did this right. Player. So hostile zombie. So our, I'm going to close that. Our friendly zombie is going to be 2-2. Two, two. Hostile zombie is 1-2. Player is 1-1. One, one. Okay, that's strange. I'm still colliding with them. They are kind of no longer chasing. Okay, something's going on here. Let me go back into our world and delete these two. That might be messing with it. Mm, interesting. Let me see what's going on here. And loser. Interesting. And I still collide with them. And they still collide with it. Something's going on here. Okay, let me double check one more time. Clear collision, collision, hostile collision. Ask. Okay. What am I doing wrong? Let me double check. Let me double check my reference. See, this is my reference here. You can kind of see it. And for some reason, it works here. I don't collide with the with my own monsters. So that's kind of strange. Let me double check the code for the world. Could be doing something wrong there. Yeah. Hostile. Friendly mob. Nope, everything seems right. Up, up, up. All right, I'll be right back. I'm going to figure this out and I'll be right back. Okay, so I just figured it out and this was kind of a stupid mistake. Um, my issue was that the player in the world itself was not being edited. So we want to, it was like this, it was one, two, one, two. So we want to make sure that it's one, one. So now it should work. There we go. So that was a bit of my mistake. It was a little dumb, um, but that's because it didn't, up I was trying to update it from here and not from the actual world. So what you could do is delete this player and then put it back in, um, or you can just edit it here as well. Um, so yeah, that's it. So the collision now works. Um, now I can run through my own enemies and I do 
and I do collide with the other zombies, and our zombies collide with the enemy zombies, so I can hit them and I die. Awesome. Um, one other thing I kind of changed that you might not have noticed is the collision is a slightly different here. Um, I made it just around it, um, and then I'm actually going to change this into a rectangle. And I'm going to make it slightly smaller, obviously. I'm going to put it right in there. I'm going to move that on top of it. I'm going to make that that big. So now, this is kind of what I found works for the knockback. Um, the knockback was a bit strange. So sometimes it worked, sometimes it didn't. Um, but this is what I found is most consistent with all directions. As you can see, like the, the bottom left might not work perfectly. So you can kind of play around with this. Um, make it slightly smaller on this side, maybe. One more time, let's see. Ah, whatever. But yeah, you can play around with this. Um, anyways, thanks for watching the video, guys. Um, if you guys like the video, comment down below, like it. Um, if you didn't, let me know what I can do to change that. Um, yeah. I'll see you guys next time.